Hi, I'm Kimberly Simon and welcome to my experiment. We're going to try and build a habitat for silkworm. I'm a second grade teacher and rather than showing my silkworms in a pan, we're going to try to build a fake mulberry tree so our kids can see them in a more natural environment. We're going to be using for this a drip pan, a table leg, some plywood, some soft mesh material, and a few other items. So let's get on with our project. To start with our project, I want to trace out the base of my habitat. Now this base has a dual purpose. One, it's going to hold the trunk of the tree in place and also the parts that I'm going to cut out are going to allow the frass to fall down into the drip pan. So I'm going to start by trying to place this in the center of my wood and trace out the cuts I'm going to make. This will be the part of the wood that I will be cutting off. Now's the moment of truth to see if our cuts are even close to where they need to be. Don't feel bad if you don't cut it right the first time. Okay. So I now need to have a circle drawn in the middle of this, which is going to be a support for my tree trunk. I'm too lazy to go in the garage and get something that's circular, so I grabbed a piece of wood off the wood pile. Now, the center circle is to support the trunk of our tree. So this is gonna go here. But the whole idea of this is that the silkworms have a place for their press, or their, which is a fancy word for poop. It goes actually into the tray and not on the wood. So we need to remove some of this wood, but we still need the support to hold the branch up. So after much deliberation, we decided on this is our template and we've drawn it on here three different ways. So what we basically end up with is a three-spoke bicycle wheel. So we'll have wood here, here, and here with the support in the middle and a rim on the outside. We're gonna be attaching the mesh to this piece and we wanna be able to lift it up in order to clean out the bottom pan. Now, to start with, I have to make a pilot hole using a drill in order to get the blade of my jigsaw in to start the inside of the wood. Okay, so I have drilled my pilot holes. I've made sure that my blade fits into my pilot hole. I've got my board clamped down again and I've got my safety glasses on. I'm ready to go. Look, it's a giant bee smiley face. Okay, we now actually have cut off our um, inside pieces and now we have our little bicycle wheel. I'm gonna sand off these edges and I'll be back with you shortly. Okay, now that I've sanded off the rough parts of my edges, I'm going to drill a hole in the center and this will be the um, hole that we screw the leg into. So I'm just gonna eyeball it about the center. That looks good. Doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, now that I've got my hole sanded down, it is time for the mesh. Okay, the first mesh that I've tried in the past is this metal mesh. Now, it's hard to work with, plus the little um, silkworms' bodies can get hurt on the pointy parts of the mesh. The next one I tried is the type of mesh that you use to cover your um, floor when you want to put a rug on top of it. Now, the holes were big enough, but because this is made out of rubber, the little pro legs tend to stick to it and it's hard to pull them off if they get stuck on us. Now, this is the mesh we're gonna try today. Hopefully, the holes are gonna be the right size for their press to fall through. Plus, it's a softer material. It's not sticky and rubbery and it's not metallic, so it's not gonna poke their little bodies. Plus, it's a nice green color for the silkworm. Okay, for this part of the project, you're gonna need your scissors and a staple gun. You can use a manual staple if you're nice and strong. I am going to measure out my mesh. I want to have extra on both ends so that I can have enough to hold on to when I want to pull it tight. And I'm just going to cut this off. This part is going to be a little easier to do on the ground, so we're moving the operation down here. So first, we're going to lay our mesh down. We're going to lay the top side up. Now, I am going to leave 
some space around each side because you want to pull this tight as you staple it. I'll be using an electric stapler, so I'm just going to put one staple in here. I've already put in two staples on this side. Now I'm going to the opposite side and I'm going to pull this very tight and I'm going to hold it. You want it almost like a trampoline. I'm going to press down. If you don't press down hard enough, that's okay. You can always go over your staple a little bit. Now I'm going to go around the edges, pulling tight and adding staples as I go. Back to this side, so I want to keep it tight. Now I'm just going to go around and I'm going to pull it as tight as I can as I'm going to try and keep that nice and tough. Okay, I put my initial row of staples in. So I've got my nice little trampoline. Right. I'm going to cut off the excess. Okay, and just to be double sure, I'm going to go around with one more row of staples. Okay, now I've got my staples in. Now we're ready to attach the hardware to the hole that we had drilled earlier. And for this, we have purchased a T-nut. Now the T-nut comes already threaded on the inside and then it has little spikes around the edges. So all we do is place the T-nut over the hole, hammer it down, and we'll be able to screw our leg in. So I'm gonna press it into the hole a little bit and I'm ready to go. Before I final, put my final habitat together, I want to drill holes into the leg that are going to support the branches and the dowels that we're going to use. We're going to drill slightly at an angle so that the branches are supported this way and don't fall out of the leg. Okay, so now I want to stagger my holes on the different planes of my leg. Okay, now that I've got my holes drilled, I'm just going to do a quick sand on the outside to get the rough edges off. Okay, now we're ready to build our habitat for our little friends. As you can see, they like to hang out on branches, which is one of the reasons we made so many holes. We're not just going to be putting leaves in there, we're actually going to be putting some branches in there. I'm going to move this little guy. Let's stick this in here and see how this works. And now I'm going to start adding my silkworms. So there you have it, our experimental mulberry tree and a new habitat for my friends the silkworms. So if you decide to try this at home or you make improvements on it, let me know. Anyway, happy silk warming.